Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. In Matthew chapter 5 uh, and then verse 16. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see. He wants them to see. They may see your good works, the extraordinary results that come out of and from your Christian experience. Look up. The greatest way to market a product is truth. You have no fear if what you are proposing is the truth. When you are marketing a product, a gadget, or some kind of thing, if you know that you are exaggerating what you claim that product can achieve, you will be afraid of someone discovering the truth. But your confidence is based on the truthfulness of what you are proposing. Are we still together? Believers chicken out and they lack confidence because they themselves are not yet sure. They are not yet sure of all the things that we claim that God is and all the things that we claim God is able to do. The apostle said, but I know whom I have believed. He says, and I am persuaded. Persuaded. Hallelujah. And so your results matter. You must come to that recognition that God desires that consistently from your life there be an unending effulgence of the supernatural manifestations of the possibilities of the kingdom. This is not an exclusive preserve for preachers. It is the heritage of every believer in Christ. Most people are not trained in church, so they do not know. And when you do not know, you cannot have expectation. You learned that last week. Are we together now? It is important for you to know that you are on, if it is true that you are part of this kingdom come project, your life must command results. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that my life will produce extraordinary results. One more time, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that my life must command extraordinary results what manner of man is this they said that even the winds and the waves obey him Jesus called their attention not by calling them he called their attention by allowing for a spectacular display there was such a manifestation of God in a man until then their only consolation were prophecies of prophets and happenings before their arrival, they were full of stories of things God did. I hope you know theologically speaking that from Malachi to Matthew was about a period of 400 years. It was called a dark phase in the history of the church. They never encountered God. They were completely alienated. No prophets, nothing that was a, a semblance of God. People were allowed to shadow box their way. That's why when Jesus came and went to the temple, they had turned the temple to a place of business because there was no power, there was no light. So instead of wasting the building, they turned it into a marketplace. And Jesus made a scourge and threw them out and said, have you not read that this house you see, that you have turned it into a business enterprise, Huh? that it shall be a house of prayer for all nations. In other words, the possibilities of God should tabernacle within this place. I forbid you from living a fruitless Christian life. I forbid you from living a barren Christian life. Where people consistently have to keep questioning, is it true that is the God of heaven you serve? Is it true that is the God of heaven? No, no, no. Even if you serve the devil, eventually there will be a semblance of results. At least Janus and Jambas had the ability to turn a serpent, a stick to a serpent. I reject a powerless generation in the name of Jesus. Listen, let me tell you this. 
Results are very important for two reasons. Number one, they act as consolations to your Christian experience. You have been taught that our pursuit uh, for God and for spiritual things is not all about results. Our ultimate pursuit is to know him like Paul said, but, but, that in the dealings of God with men, there is a very unique consolation that results bring to people. You can serve God when you are poor, but you will serve God better when you are blessed. Is that true? You can serve God when you are stagnated in the midst of pain, but you serve God better. You, in fact, you serve God best when you have the liberty to be able to serve him freely. The Bible says, listen, it says, he that told you have asked for nothing. It says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Imagine the excellency of your spiritual life when you can import the possibilities of God and bring it to your family. Your unbelieving family that has mocked God before your face and then day one, they keep recording like a secretary. Day one, healing. Day two, breakthrough. Day three, deliverance. Day four, speed. Day five, restoration. At the end of it, they'll have to drop their pen and say, who is this God? Are you paying attention now? Yes, sir. Our evangelism is poor and we keep begging and moving around because every witness is not a valid witness until you have an evidence. I have taught you this, that when you go to the court of law, your witness may not be strong until you present an evidence. So Peter was standing before the Jerusalem council making defense of his faith and the man who was crippled was standing next to him. And the people could not dispute that miracle. What evidence do you have that becomes a backing to all your speakings? When you say God is faithful, where is the proof? Not everybody is a spiritual man. The Greeks seek for a sign. Listen, they will come to the well like the woman at the well. They will not come to the well because of Jesus. They will come to the well because of your results. Then when they come to the well, they will encounter Jesus. Now their convictions will now be greater than the results. But that which attracts is the excellency of the workings of God in your life. Look up please. How do you think people get into cultism? Have you ever seen a cultist carrying a placard and say, today we are on evangelism? Have you seen that happen? But perpetually they keep recruiting people. Why? Because of a semblance of results. Have you seen a herbalist group themselves as a team and say we are going around Abuja or around our villages? In fact, most of the herbalists that cause mayhem are never really seen and yet their impact cannot be denied because of results. Shout results. Let the devil hear you. Shout results. I'm here to provoke you tonight to shake away every excuse that has kept you down all kinds of explanations listen there are many people whose growth whose salvation is at the mercy of your results that includes your family that includes all those around you your workplace that includes the members of your church the Bible says the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation, not the excuses. Herein is my Father glorified when you bear much fruit. When you bear much fruit. That you come from a family where no one has risen and you hear these arrogant demonic people make statements like nobody will rise from your family. You don't need to start jumping. Let your result answer that there is a cause that has tied everybody in that family that nobody will rise no matter where they go to you cannot argue with results and then you send the children of the harbalists to school on your scholarship and tell him this is a token of righteousness jesus sends rain to the righteous and the unrighteous let your children go to school while we keep hoping for your own repentance Are we together? Demonic appearances. People go to bed in the night and cannot sleep. By morning you think they've rested. It was a wrestle. This time it's not Jacob's kind of wrestle. Wrestle with demons, principalities. And with one decree. Like Jesus made over the sea. Peace be still. 
and an age-long calm is restored in your family they will start looking for names to explain the supernatural like pastor like whatever it is and they are right because the Bible says they shall call you ministers of our God listen ladies and gentlemen from this night your life will begin to command extraordinary results I'm prophesying it to someone in the name of Jesus the resurrected King May your life command such phenomenal results. Please sit. For as long as your life is not producing results, do not rest. No. It is foolishness to be in a state of rest. Rest there means with no passion to press. When your life has not produced a requisite level of results, there is a labor dimension in the kingdom in prayer the labor dimension in the word that you do not rest until there is that establishment poverty all around your family and you fold your arms as if everything is all right is that the will of god no. are we together arguments day and night because of money this one steals blames this one husband blames wife and you can come in as an ambassador no long salmon i come in the name of the lord it says blessed is he that cometh in the name of the lord and you calm the family down and in a moment using the tool of economy you preach a message that is sound and end all these devilish arguments once and for all Next time you are going to church, they will say, can we come? Does that look to you like Micah chapter 2? It says, it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain and above the hills. Is that true? And it says, nation shall run to it. That they will tell one another, come, let us go to the house of Jacob. It said, for there he will teach us his ways. It's important that our Christian lives stop being inert and passive. No, we are in an active mission revealing Jesus. And if you are really interested in Jesus, this Jesus project cannot happen by folding your arms. So listen, I have given you an orientation in this ministry that when we advocate results, it's not just a mundane search to heal yourself from failure. The project is beyond proving a point that you are not a failure. No, that the program of God is result dependent. Do not downplay the problems that plague men in our world. Nobody will follow you anywhere if your life does not have results. I guarantee you. They may like you because they are related to you. They may console you out of their life. But if you want genuine followership to Jesus, it will be at an instance of results. Again, let me speak to someone. Whatever has made people run away from your Jesus, the version of Jesus you have been presenting that has been sending more people to hell because they cannot see the evidence, the workings of the Spirit, I declare from tonight, begin to command extraordinary results. Please be seated. Moses, Moses that you read in the Bible, watch this. Moses said, do not let us depart from here. If your presence will not go with us listen very carefully it says how shall they know please help me honor Reverend Akila such a pleasant surprise blessings to you sir house on the rock just hallelujah if your life is bankrupt of results you will only create a basis for debates that will keep planting unbelief are we together now let me tell you the truth forget about what ignorant people say results are powerful powerful let me repeat again genuine results results of healing results of salvation results of favor find a man whose life 
is an expression of results and I show you where argument comes to an end and end with a full stop when Jesus hung upon the cross he made three interesting statements it is finished and any devil that wants to add a comma to that statement the power of God has been guaranteed to protect that statement it is finished shame is finished disappointment finished years of crying without solution is finished yes you have to believe this there are families coming to church and once you gather yourselves to go to the house of God here comes the mockers who come in the spirit of Sambalat and Tobias stopping you from building what God is building and they mock at you and say at least we are it's very clear that we do not love Jesus but you who is a worker in church you who is passionate are in this season may my God use your results to answer many in the name of Jesus Christ That a family that you thought nothing good will come out of all of a sudden five of them in one month all get noble jobs a family where the three women are barren all of them carrying twins each as a signature that this came from heaven someone who had been left for dead suddenly like Lazarus comes back with power and vitality you tell me that will not preach a message can you preach better than that result i have taught you that results are also evangelists there is a sermon only results can preach please listen to me there is a sermon only results can preach and while the church keeps downplaying the power of genuine results the world keeps using results to bait many away from their passion for god how many people start from church and end up elsewhere because results took them out of God's presence? I believe in results, oh. I do, sir. I do. I do. When Jesus died and rose from the dead, he didn't need to go around saying, I am risen. He said, look at me. He that was dead now is alive. On the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came upon all of them they said this man are drunk with wine and Peter got, and Peter got up cleaned himself and said no this is only in the morning he said but this is that prophet Joel prophesied this this is that hmm. this is that that favor I was talking about this is that that breakthrough I was talking about this is that that speed that God can bring to a man this is that some of you already promised your parents that in their lifetime they will see the faithfulness of God through you make sure that prophecy comes to pass make sure they do not just pass on like that they are waiting you told mama last year that you will not die until you see God for your years of serving the missionaries and God has kept her alive except that your result is not yet there listen you can insist that father from tonight no more excuses I begin to contend until my life listen when you are louder than your results men will hate you you see there is there is you are not supposed to be louder than your results in fact your results should far act. it should it should um, be an amplifier of your speakings the challenge with our generation is that the ratio of the genuine results to the things we propose is so wide that the results are so small Solomon did not need to brag and make noise the excellency of his results were there and every king that came in, including the arrogant queen of Sheba when she came and went through the entire palace she said half of this was not told me 
that someone will come to your life and know that the anointing is at work but not know the extent until the day they have an opportunity to sit down under the grace of God upon your life. They live not intimidated but inspired that a man can be this open for more of God and it will drive men to pray to fast and say, Lord, I desire more. Results are evangelists. There is a sermon that only authentic results can preach. Are we together? So let me give us a charge tonight. It remains my contribution to helping everyone here to produce authentic, genuine, spiritual results. Let me capture my charge tonight in a topic I titled The Ways of God. The Ways of God. Psalm 103, verse 7. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts, the Bible says, unto the children of Israel. Psalm 25, from verse 4 and 6. This was a cry from David the psalmist. He says, show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy path. Reading to 6, verse 5. He says, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. Verse 6. He says, remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. In Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16, when you read a very powerful rendition there, it says, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein. It says, And ye shall find rest for your souls. So if you need rest, wishing it does not bring you to rest. Blindly desiring rest does not bring you rest the bible says there is a path that you must find he calls it the good way then he says walk therein and you will consequently and inevitably find rest for your souls hallelujah i have taught and you have heard me teach many many times that god is a god of patterns please write it down if you're writing god is a god of patterns God is a God of patterns. What is a pattern? A pattern is a pathway, a methodology, a predefined pathway that leads to a spiritual outcome is called a pattern. And the entire journey of the believer as far as manifesting possibilities is a blend of patterns and the corresponding glories that follow. Listen carefully. So for every dimension of glory that the believer's life should capture and express, there is a spiritual pattern, another word for a mystery, another word for a pathway. There is a spiritual pattern that leads to definite outcomes that we call glory. Are we together now? Every possibility in the kingdom, listen carefully, Every possibility in the kingdom is a product of understanding and working in keeping with certain spiritual patterns. God does not leave the manifestation of the glory of God to guessing. There are exact spiritual patterns that produce exact outcomes. Now, when the believer is laced with all kinds and all levels of ignorance, you will find out that number one, your life will be bankrupt of glory or number two, your life will produce dimensions of glory that are not predictable. So you may stumble across certain results, perhaps results that come from prophetic decrees. So a decree is made over your life and that week becomes a week of favor and then it ceases because the real pattern that controls that outcome has not been grasped. This is the product of, this is the, 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 the call for mastery. 
Mastery brings you in a position where you no longer fear your results because you have studied the pattern that leads to that outcome. Are we together now? God is a God of pattern. When you go to meet a tailor, look up please. You meet a tailor, one who perhaps is responsible for your, your clothes. You show that tailor something that you want, no matter how complicated the design is. Sometimes you are even afraid whether the man can do it and he laughs. He says, I understand. He knows how to produce that result. Why? Because as complicated as that outcome is, there is a pattern. If you are not a tailor, it will remain a mystery. The assignment of the training school is to demystify that mystery. Are we together now? When you go and meet a medical doctor, especially a consultant, while you are describing your cases using all kinds of, uh, you know, limited expressions, all he's looking for are patterns because there are patterns that can reveal to him that this is this. Sometimes the patterns may require to take specimens and then to test further. But the whole idea is that through the power of patterns, many lives have been preserved, medically speaking. There is a pattern that leads to influence. There is a pattern that leads to walking in the supernatural. There is a pattern, listen carefully, that makes you an exceptional leader. There is a pattern that leads to wealth and abundance, a pattern for speed, a pattern for deliverance. Your assignment as a believer is to remain ever open to bring together by the, the ministry of a teaching priest and in partnership with the spirit. Every service is supposed to be an exposition of spiritual patterns so that if and when you have been around a house of God for a while where the word of God is taught with accurate with accuracy there you may not know everything but at least we should see commendable results in your life by engaging patterns are we together now watch this I'm holding a mic here and there is a system to put this mic on. When I push this down, then it comes back. I switched it off. Now, the, the mic does not care who manipulates it. The moment you engage the pattern that offs the power, it offs. Am I right on that? It does not ask you whether you are an American. It does not ask you whether you are Russian, whether you are European, whether you are Nigerian. If the mic is off, it is not because of any tribal sentiments. So you can hold this mic with such profound potential to amplify your voice and yet you may not be heard. And you see, it is dangerous to not produce results for a long time, I have taught you. Because your, the absence of your result produces another kind of theology. When, you, when someone has to learn God through the lens of your life, what part of God will be misrepresented? If someone has to use your life as the only template to learn God, if your life were the only Bible to be read, are we going to read John in your life? Are we going to read Proverbs in your life? For some of you, the only part in your life may be Ecclesiastes. You will rob us of knowing that there are other chapters. My assignment is to stretch you and to show you, listen, that you do not have to be afraid of results. Results are exact products of patterns. Are we together? Yes. Moses in Exodus chapter 33, Exodus chapter 33, we'll read verse 13, then we'll go to verse 18. Moses was crying unto God. Verse 18 was a cry to experience the glory of God. But most people do not know that the request started from verse 13. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, it says, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Do you know what he was saying? In other words, I, I need to lead these people properly, but the problem is my convictions and my personal results. And I know that the glory of God upon me would affect their loyalty. So show me your way. Now verse 18. 
33 and verse 18 and he said I beseech thee show me your glory you will never experience the glory of God in any aspect of your life until you study carefully the spiritual pattern connected to that please I want you to follow carefully and believe what I'm telling you your life will remain an unending wonder once you master the patterns of the spirit So when the devil wants to rob you of the glory of God, he does not fight the glory. He fights your access to the patterns of the spirit. Are we together? In John chapter 8 and verse 32, Jesus now comes in the New Testament and he's teaching us. And he said, ye shall know the truth. He calls it the truth. He says, and the truth that you know shall make you free. That the truth has liberating power. In other words, if you are bankrupt of the truth, you can remain in bondage. Amplified says that, that you shall be unquestionably free in certain renditions. In John 17, 17, John 17, 17, it says, sanctify them by your truth. Thy word is truth. Go back to KJV. Sanctify them through your truth. It says, thy word is truth. So when the Bible talks of truth, he means access to the word of God. Ignorance is a very dangerous cancer. Worse than the medical diseases that plague people. Ignorance. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. The prophet was speaking by the spirit and lamenting said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge it says because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou be no priest to me seeing that thou has forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children in psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7 very popular scripture here they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some of you, not the prophets among you, not the apostles among you. All of you are children of the most high. Verse 7 says, but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. Ignorance is a dangerous cancer in this kingdom. Hallelujah. In fact, in Luke chapter 11, I believe, um, verse 35, it should be Luke 11, give us 35. Jesus said, take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. Do you know what he's saying? That means you can carry a body of information. It may even be spiritual truth and you hope that you are carrying the truth. If it is the truth, it has liberating power. Isn't it interesting that there are many believers who carry a backlog of all kinds of knowledge using all sorts of references. But in the face of real life situation, they are not able to produce victory. If it does not produce victory, it is not the truth. The truth sustains the power to bring victory to the believer. And let God be true. And every man a liar. Are we still together? It says take heed. That what you call light. That means I can carry a revelation and be shouting Rema for years. And yet your life does not capture the corresponding glory. Did you know? I wish I had something, a biro or a stick or something. Give me your drumstick. My... Watch this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a drumstick. Someone can deceive me into believing that this is a mic and I can sincerely believe that this is a mic. Am I right on that? Now, the problem is not my believing. The problem is that I believe they lie. So I can hold that mic confidently in front of you coming from many years of indoctrination. I have been taught that this is a mic. It's just that it was designed in a way that looks like a drumstick. So I can call the whole world and say, come and see how loud this mic can be. The only thing or the only issue here is that my believing was unto a lie. So he's saying, take heed so that what you have been calling Rema, 
take heed so that what you have been saying this is revelation does it stand the test of time and does it produce the character of glory many of us have been holding things that look like what we think they are but they really are not you've been holding a revelation that you believe this is the secret of prosperity but it's not showing in your life you have been holding a revelation that you believe this is the secret of longevity this is the secret of excellence listen if it does not produce the glory connected to it it is not that light it is not the truth are we together now so back to this example i'm holding a drumstick and now you imagine that i now add pride to this ignorance so that when you are lovingly coming to call me to say listen you've been holding this for five years but i want to with every sense of love let you know that this is not a mic this is a drumstick and i say no my mentor told me or a spirit told me that anything that looks like this with a pointed end is a mic. What if he was wrong? Listen, we are not discussing the subject of transformation, but I was teaching our school of ministry students. I think someone asked a question and I was teaching them that when you come to the school of transformation, there are two dimensions to followership that leads to transformation. Just for your knowledge, the first level is called follow them so god mandates that you follow human models are we together models whose lives have captured results enough to inspire you but the greater dimension is looking onto jesus that means you now come to the awareness that even the models as best as they are can be limited that they are also students in the school of the spirit they are just students that have had the privilege to go ahead of you so a time will come where both the lecturer and the student stand at a loss. It is only the God of heaven that can show mercy at that point. Are we together now? So that your followership may look like you are following a man, but that beyond that man, you are always verifying that that man is following the Christ. So in, in experience, you are not just looking on to men, you are looking on to Jesus. That's how you get holistically transformed. I can love you with all my heart, and not mean to deceive you but I may have an accumulation of inaccurate or blatantly wrong knowledge and I may communicate that error to you with such passion and I hope not with pride and you receive it in honor to Jesus and in honor to me as his servant except that when you act out that wrong information the corresponding glory that should follow does not follow are we together Thank you. Now your rod is anointed. <laughs> no, 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 don't. Don't worship it. Hallelujah. You know, believers, this is still part of the things I'm saying now. Somebody can go and hang, put a rope on that thing now. <laughs> no, it was just an example. If we're together, say amen. amen. So the Bible gives us a word of caution. And this is a message really to us all, but it extends to the body of Christ. It's important that in this season, we are careful and unashamed about examining that which we call light. Is it true light? I love the way the Bible puts it. It says that was the true light that lighted every man, meaning there are false lights. You don't have to be a wicked person to bring deception. You can be sincere, but the lights that you carry, the Bible says, the spirit speaketh expressly that some in the latter time shall depart from the faith. Is that in your Bible? It says they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. The person does not have to be demonized. The person does not have to be bad, but you can teach something that is inconsistent with the character of God. It will still bring destruction to God's people are we together my greatest if I have any fear at all in my life it is this that I do not examine my life at a point and find out that what I have been calling truth especially that which I've been proposing to God's people is now discovered that is a lie so I continue to examine myself even whilst I teach are we together now yes but I can tell you by the authority and integrity of scripture, forget about the manifestation of the glory of God in your life if you do not study the patterns of the kingdom. 
Let's go to the kitchen now. Many of you do well in the kitchen. You know how to cook all kinds of things. Continental dishes, local dishes, some of you. Are we together? Am I right on that? And then some of you are so good that, you know, we call you chefs and all of that. And like I've always told you, when you meet somebody who is professional, all you need to do is describe your end product. Tell them this is the picture of what I, I saw this. Can you produce this? And they smile with the confidence of a good student and say, get out of my kitchen. Give me time. And sometimes what will tempt you back to the kitchen is the aroma that is a testament of mastery. Are we together now? And now you are tempted to come back and say, what in the world is going here? And they tell you your meal is ready. But imagine a very sincere relative, a sincere brother, maybe your husband, who has, who has not got the knowledge of these mysteries and these patterns in the kitchen. Even if he's an anointed person, a, a, a preacher, now you lock the person there. Are we together? For instance, me. You know what I'm going to do? I will do what I know to do. Pray. I will pray first. Because the Bible says, any man afflicted, that thing there is not, that is not a test. That's a trial for me. Are we together? But the point is that there is no glory until there is an understanding of patterns. If you understand this, half of your issues are solved because all you need to do is write the various areas in your life where the glory of God has not yet been revealed. And then you will take responsibility like a mature believer that you are or becoming. Are we together? You now get back and say there has to be an explanation as to why in spite of the prayers and the prophetic decrees, it looks like the curse is still at work in this family. Is it that God is powerless? There has to be an answer. Do you know that there is nothing I know that pleases God like brokenness mixed with a sense of responsibility. Hallelujah. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15. Here's what the Bible says. The labor of the foolish. The foolish here not being an insult is a description. Bankruptcy of knowledge. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them. That means there is no sparing, provided you are not interested in going for revelation to understand the patterns, the ways of God. He says it will weary every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city. Not because there is no city. Because he knoweth not how to go into the city. Now, there are sincere men and women of God who love Jesus with all their hearts, but they have not learned the ancient patterns and the mysteries that make ministry work to command results with the dignity of kingdom integrity. There are many people whose assignments are influence dependent, and yet they do not know the patterns that can make a generation loyal to you. It is dangerous to understand your assignment, but not know and or have the tools that will help you to be effective. Are we together? Yes. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.